Good morning again. We are back again today. I'm going to try to just pan the camera down, so bear with me as I'm learning a new app this morning. Hopefully we can kind of see what we're doing here. So um, I'm going to give you an idea of how I started on the bed up top that I've already, the headboard part of the bed. So let me just raise this up. And that's gonna sneak peek of the headboard. And then I'm gonna kinda give you an idea of how I got started with that as the customer now wants it put on the footboard to match. So I'm gonna pan the camera down and we're gonna see Hopefully you can kind of see my marks. I may have to bring it out just a tiny bit. Okay, you see that long mark there. So what I did is on the footboard and the headboard, I measured from, on the headboard the other day, I measured from side to side, got my width, and from top to bottom, just in that simple framework there. So, once I got my width, I divided that in half and marked my center point. And then I come down here to my wallpaper that I'm working with and determine that it has to go uh, from top to bottom. And you would want to get your pattern centered with um, the center portion of the bed to make your pattern lay out correctly to where um, it's even from left to right and top to bottom. So it just, it's not haphazardly put on there and it looks correct. So then you have to center from top to bottom to make sure that when you cut it, it lays out correctly with the pattern. So the centermost portion of these little tiles is literally that center mark right there. Um, that little inner circle, the innermost part. So then I measured um, from that center point. So this from top to bottom is 24 inches. So half of 24 is 12. So you get your center point centermost point and you measure in this instance what I'm working with 12 inches from that center point up and 12 inches from that center point down that way you know you've got plenty of material to cover with so I'm going to come back roll this out a little bit and mark this at 12 inches down here Then I'm going to go to this top part. I'm trying to keep everything straight here as I'm working. And come up here and measure another 12 inches. And then I can put my yardstick there as a straight edge. Paper will hold steel. And then mark that all the way from top to bottom. Okay. Put it across that line. The other day I um, cut extra material so that I knew as I was laying it out I would have plenty of extra I could kind of play with it as to its placement on the bed and um, 
make sure it laid out and looked correct to the eye. So that as you're facing the bed, it doesn't look all cattywampus on the bed. Okay, so I've got that snuff center portion of it. And um, then I'll go from left, I'll come back and do the left portion and then the right portion. Um, kind of rotate you up here. And let's see here. I honestly just um, prop the footboard up against the headboard today because I've already got the headboard done and so I can kind of just eyeball it from here. Um, I may have to move up the tripod a tiny bit. I apologize here for all the moving of the tripod. I'm Y'all just bear with me here everything at a good as I adjust. So, everyone can see. so thanks for bearing with me here. Okay, that's not going to be quite tall enough, I don't think. But maybe you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to explain as I'm working here. So, let's see here. I may come back and measure this just to be sure, but eyeballing it, it's gonna go right there, which is gonna match up with the same lines that's on the headboard. And, um, because you want, when the person puts their bed up, sets it all up, that this is not from left or right. You want it centered and the same pattern as what is on the headboard. So I'll come back in a little while and um, show you as I'm adhering it to the bed. Talk to you soon. I went ahead and got everything centered and I went ahead and cut my other two pieces because it's a lot easier to get all of that done off camera and um, I can think a little bit better. So, um, if you can see it, it's hard to see it with this white, um, but it's centered with the piece that's on the headboard. So it coincides with everything like that. So I'm gonna just go from left to right and go ahead and line up with these um, faux ceiling tiles embossed wallpaper. Um, there is a good bit of waste. So just know that if you're doing something like this, always order plenty of extra. Um, this, I didn't even have the option. Um, it just come in a really large roll. So we had plenty, thank goodness. So all I'm doing is I, uh, it's pre-pasted. So all I had to do was measure and cut and then um, as I just put plenty of water on it and then I folded it over, no creases or anything, just kind of lightly rolled it over and let the glue set up and um, actually that's the bottom section. So let me do this from top to bottom. Um, I'm just uh, unfolding one section at a time. Um, oops, let's see here. Hang on just a second. Okay, so I only have um, a small amount to, to work with. This um, embossing wallpaper is really soft. So just keep that in mind, you have to work very, very carefully. Okay, so you can kind of see, um, that's why I cut plenty of extra too, because um, you see that ripped up at the top. So, um, but that, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's not a problem because it's off of the bed. So, but that's what I'm saying. Once it's wet, it's um, very, very easy um, 
It's soft and pliable, but it's also very easily whipped because of that. So I'm just going to gently take my fingers while it's wet and kind of mash it into those seam, into those creases um, right up underneath that framework. So you can kind of see I'll have to come back with my X-Acto knife in a little while once it's good and dry and then cut the excess off. But all of this has to set up very well because, like I say, it doesn't cut the best because it is it's an embossed wallpaper and um, it's very soft. It mashes very easily. Okay, so I'm going to hold the top section as I come under here and unfold the bottom section. And very, very carefully. And make sure that um, you know, I have to just kind of play with it. Make sure everything, this seam in the middle matches up also. And as you're working with it, it will, you can kind of gently pull back up on it and get everything lined up. I'm gonna work with it just a tiny bit more. So I pulled it up and then pull that back a little bit. You wanna work from the center out that's the way I always do it at least. Easier that way. And then you can kind of take your hand and just push it gently up against that seam. And then making sure the two seams come together. Because you don't want that seam to show. Make sure the two pieces are coming together very, very well. Not overlapping, but coming together. Okay. And then I'm just taking a very lightly damp rag and just wiping over everything, making sure I get all the um, glue residue, if there's any, um, off and making sure everything is lined up down bottom. And you can always come back with one of these, but since this is a embossed wallpaper, I would use one of these very, very carefully. It's just kind of like a little spreader and scraper. And I, I like to kind of move the glue towards that seam. I did buy extra glue just in case for the seams, but I honestly don't think I'm going to need it because the um, headboard went very smoothly as far as the seams staying together. But like I said, I'm taking extra care to make sure there's plenty of glue towards the seams. Making sure there's plenty of glue towards the tops. You don't want those seams to start, start turning loose on you. And if any extra glue squishes out of the seams, like I'm having here just a tiny bit, I'm just rubbing that glue off and and then just come back with a damp rag and wipe it away. So the rag is a whole lot more gentle to come back and work with. So I got everything lined up. Okay, just making sure that seam is good. And then taking the rag, literally just kind of putting just a finger in the rag and then I'm going to just gently make that line up against that frame. Okay. And that's kind of making the line as to where too, like it will stand back a little bit. 
and not stick to the other. I'm just kind of trying to gently hold that back too. So as it dries, it will dry away from the bed. Okay, now I'm gonna move over to the other piece. Okay, scooch all around with me. And I forgot to mark my top and bottom on this, so I just have, kind of have to play with it a minute as to where it actually goes. I think that's it, but I'm just gonna play with it and see. Oop, can't get my straight edge. Let me fold that back under. Got the jagged edge that goes over to my right that doesn't matter if it's jagged. So let's see here. I got plenty of glue on this one activated and it's kind of squishy underneath. So I'm having to once again just work carefully and slowly. And there's glue squishing out, which is a good thing. You want it to have plenty of glue back there. Okay. Just very softly going around the, all the edges. And then I hold the top and pull that bottom down, and it should line up. Yep. Scoop those edges away just a tiny bit, and then make sure they're all lined up. Pull it away just a little bit. Make sure everything not overlapping, but it meets right at the same. So, have to work carefully so you don't get bubbles up underneath everything. So just once again, taking my fingertips and going along the edges and making a very gentle crease right here all along that framework. It makes it push away from the bed a little bit. And if you do, do have a little bit stick, it's not a huge deal. Um, I had a little bit stick um, on the framework, on the headboard, and I just took some water, some warm water and rag, and just kind of wiped over it and gently picked it off and it come right off. It wasn't, it was not a huge deal. Again, just pushing a little bit of extra glue towards those seams. And you can kind of see it rolling um, towards the seam and it'll push it out. But that is just extra insurance and lets you know that you've got plenty of glue there. Once again, the soft, damp rag kind of helps too. And I'm just making sure there's no extra glue there so that when I go to paint it, um, that there's nothing there to resist the paint. I don't know if 
if you can see it, probably not on camera, I can't see it from this angle. You can kind of see my pencil line. It's not a big deal because this is going to be painted over. And um, all of that will be covered up. as far as putting the actual wallpaper on. And um, then once this dries good and I come back and cut the excess off, I'll come back and we'll put some paint on it. See you soon, bye. In this next portion of the video, I'm gonna speed it up so the video doesn't last too terribly long. You can see me using what looks like a putty knife. It's just something, a little tool I used to use when I did vinyl art and I'm using it just to hold the edges tight to keep things from ripping around the edges any too much. But you will see later on in the video that that's not that big of a deal if there were some small rips around the edges. I did go back in and use some silicone caulk to prevent or give extra insurance to any lifting around the edges, but I made sure all edges had plenty of glue and mashed them down. And so all of this is covered in with caulk and it is any small little rips, rips around the edges not to be worried about. Then after this, I did reference back to a prior video showing how I accomplished the look on the final product. It is just um, on the headboard showing how I accomplished the painting on the headboard and then the copper Shiva. You feel free to go back into my previous videos and I go into more detail as to how the look was exactly accomplished in on this piece of furniture. I could not be more pleased with how this turned out. As my customer told me an idea and basically gave me creative freedom to just do what I felt was best to do. And that's when sometimes I do my absolute best work. So I sped this portion up and you can refer back to the previous video as I go into more detail. It turned out to me looking like a copper penny. And then the next slide you will see the before picture. This is an old antique bed that was in my client's family for many generations. It had lots of work to be done to it. And then the after. It is so beautiful and I could not be more excited. Thanks again for sticking with me. Have a great day.